Ryan McLeans with BSF Picture Performance. Today we're going to be talking about the Kinetic Arm and how this tool is helping athletes stay healthy um, and how it's became a revolutionary like tool for baseball players or any overhead throwing athlete. I'm going to dive a little bit deep into you know the anatomy, the science, um, the reasoning behind why this was developed and made um, by Jason Colloran, um, founder of the Kinetic Arm. You, me and him developed a great relationship, collaborating all the time, learning off of each other. I'm super excited and grateful to develop that relationship with Jason. Uh, he'd be flying me out to the ABCA to help them out and to keep collaborating and learning with you know all the knowledge that he has developed and how he you know invented a product like this. So when you're talking about throwing, and I'm gonna dive deep into like why guys are utilizing this now from you know injury rehab protocol-wise or even just management of workload during the training, um, and even how you can wear this in-game as well. We can get into that in a second. So as a thrower, right, one of the things that we have to take in consideration is that throwing is a passive range of motion when we hit layback. So as I'm throwing, right, as we're going into external rotation max layback, right, that's a passive range of motion. Passive meaning we can't control, again, how much is being produced. When it's passive, that means we can't control that. So obviously I can control active external rotation like this, but I don't throw a baseball from here to here, right? You'll see in a slow motion video, right? So you'll see in the slow motion video, right? You're gonna see that the arm and the forearm gets parallel to the ground, so it's passive, right? So again, I always ask the question like, all right, if you were to throw it 100%, right? Can you reduce layback? Like if a coach was yelling from the dugout, hey, less layback when you're throwing, can you do that? No, you can't control a passive range of motion. So when it's passive, right? What's gonna end up happening is that the stress is gonna to go to the passive connective tissue. And the connective tissues, it plays a vital role in our health as overhead athletes and as throwers, right? Because that's structure. So it's, it's your, your, that's where the stability is being met, right? Because again, muscles do not fully engage and to help stabilize at that end range, it's more about the connective tissue. And so because it's passive, that's where peak stress happens in that max external rotation layback on the elbow and the shoulder. And so because of that, right, we have to understand that, you know, again, the muscle bell curve, athletes at the strongest at the mid stance, weakest at the end range. So when we know that when we hit an end range, right, it's about how do we, one, reduce stress at that end range. So think about it, like, you got cleats to absorb the force in the ground, to change directions, you got batting gloves, you got a helmet, you know, you got all these protective gears, but nothing has ever been made for the arm, um, specifically from an external standpoint, right? So like, you could utilize this as more of like an external muscular skeletal, you know, system device, support almost in a sense, right? And so when you're using the kinetic arm, right, um, it could also help clean up a little arm path, but it's mainly gonna be a tool to help offset stress and load at that max layback at where peak stress happens. So when you're using this, right, like I'll show you guys how to put it on. So when we're utilizing the kinetic arm, and again, so you're going to find obviously the tag, but when you're when you're putting this guy on, you want to internally rotate your throwing arm into the sleeve. So in the sleeve, you got all these polymers, and, and that's what's gonna, that elastic um, recoil that happens at that layback, it's not gonna allow us to exceed that full end range. So it, it, these polymers do, in the muscle web technology that they utilize does such a great great job at, again, not allowing to exceed that full end range where peak stress happens. So when you put this on, you're gonna internally rotate the hand or the arm, and as you pull it up the sleeve, right, you're gonna notice that these polymers are gonna supposed to be going over the elbow. So as you put it on here, okay, make sure that these polymers are lining up over the medial and dial of the elbow here. All right, and then as you put this on, okay, it's gonna be a strap here, strap here. Okay, and then again, another strap down here to put on as well. So again, like this is a device that it's not gonna restrict your throwing motion. So again, like you're able to wear this in game, um, you know, as an athlete underneath your jersey. And so again, like this is an external device that is gonna help us offset that stress. So it's, it's gonna allow us to stay 
in this nice slot, right? So again, because when we're exceeding all of these end ranges where distraction force is happening, right? It's gonna, it's, it's not gonna allow us to exceed that peak stress, all right? Where layback happens, or even like when guys are teaching, you know, scap retraction, you got all these younger guys yanking and pulling this way. Well, you got a distraction force on that front part of the anterior shoulder where that bicep tendon is. And, you know, that's where obviously, you know, anterior superior labrum slat tears happen. So you got the polymers running across that anterior, you know, labrum area that around this brachial plexus region. Okay, so you got this to help support this end range. And then when you go into that late cocking stage, right, and you're, and you're rotating into layback, right, it's going to allow, see how nice and fluid I stay with this, it's still gonna allow us to keep proper, you know, throw motions. Now, it's not a quick fix to enhancing mechanics. You gotta address the rest of the kinetic chain. But again, it's, a, it's an external device. It's a dynamic stabilizer to help us offset stress at layback. So you can just see here, I'm still nice and whippy through my delivery. And again, when you're training with mechanics, you know, uh, the arm is attached to the trunk. So yes, you know, there is a time and point where you can work on a little arm path work, but again, your arm path is predicated on your trunk's direction. So I could sit here in front of the mirror all day long and go like this, but the minute I'm on the mound where I got gravity pulling me down, right, I gotta learn how to train this trunk to move in a proper direction because the minute I, I sit in my backside and the mound's pulling me down and I yank off, you know, my early trunk rotation, right, arm's gonna drag. So there's a lot of mechanical flaws that still go on with younger athletes, but at least what they now have, like I said, is a dynamic stabilizer, right, to help offset that stress that we will exceed and that we will have with mechanical flaws. So the mechanic training is always going to be a process year after year after year when you're training with this type of sport, right? And so that's why, you know, when we're looking at mechanics, we got to look at mobility, we got to look at the strength numbers, we got to look at force production, how well do you accelerate your mass? and then again enhancing the skill of throwing and so again because there's mechanical flaws with everybody every individual is different right at least now we have a protective gear that is going to be a dynamic stabilizer to help offset stress where that we do exceed as a as an overhead athlete as a thrower all right because again one when we're exceeding a passive range of motion when we hit front foot strike and go into layback right again it's passive so the stress is going to go to passive connective tissue and really if you if you understand the anatomy of the shoulder and the elbow, right? You got a ball and socket joint dictating the hinge joint. So hinge joint meaning flexion and extension. So the arm was really never meant to go passive back this way. So you're gonna have a lot of repetitive stress over and over and over again, which is why the workload management and, and managing intensity and volume levels is so, is so crucial in our player development to make sure we can, again, help our bodies have that longevity and have a longevitized career where we're not just every day, we're just yanking and yanking and throwing and throwing as hard as we can and that next thing you know it's just a matter of time until you know the tissue or the ligament or the tendon blows out so we got to understand that component to it um, but again it's it's a device that is out there like no other that again it's protective gear no different with cleats batting gloves helmets and nothing's ever been made for the arm from an external standpoint right so um, that's why I, I really believe in this product the science involved by spending a great amount of time with Jason and you know what he's developing and you know, all the knowledge that he has learned um, throughout his years, and it's, it's really impressive. Um, so again, I, I highly encourage athletes to look at a product like this. And again, there's different sizes that you can get um, based on your height and your weight uh, to make sure it, it fits you. Um, and so, you know, again, this, this device right here, in my opinion, is a device that, you know, I definitely believe in. I have, uh, I have, I had thoracic outlet. I had both a vascular and neurological issue. I broke that first rib. Um, and for about six, uh, seven years now, it's just been a, a battle even every day after competition, um, you know, with TOS. And so, you know, as a, as a, as an athlete, as a former athlete who had thoracic outlet and then who was able to, you know, embed this into the throwing, um, I've definitely noticed a significant difference and a lot of our athletes um, here utilize it for the training. Uh, we even get new athletes um, that, because we at BSF Pitcher Performance at the Bo Jackson's Elite Sports Center, we have a partnership with Rush Orthopedics, um, and we'll even get athletes that are coming to us after getting cleared because you know they got injured. And so we've, we've been developing a return to throw uh, protocol uh, that embeds the kinetic arm um, 
with the training. Um, again, because if we know that where peak stress happens at max layback, and especially a guy that's just now getting cleared, right, before we just throw him back into the fire and just have him throw and throw and throw and, right, now we can have a specific device to help offset that stress and load to, again, develop the strength, the durability in his body, um, to reverse engineer his mechanics, and again, to utilize a tool like this, this dynamic stabilizer, to, you know, help his management of load and stress, because if we know higher the stress, higher the risk injury. So again, if we want to keep throwing and we want to keep playing, right, we got to learn how to reduce that stress, clean up the mechanics, get strong, and then properly build him up to then go back into competition mode when he's ready. So again, this this is a it's just a great device overall for your training, for your health, um, and just when you understand that the in-depth part of throwing and, and where stress happens and how these polymers and the muscle web technology that they've used and invented, how it works, it, it's a it's it's a fantastic device. It's 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 awesome. Um, and so I highly encourage anyone that's out here um, listening to this video to invest into the kinetic arm. Um, definitely embed that into your into your training. If you guys got any questions, you know, on the arm, um, how to utilize it during the training, you know, when is it appropriate for you to utilize it in game when you're comfortable uh, using it, um, leave us a comment. Um, so if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe to this channel. Um, we're gonna be putting out more videos um, and more educational videos. Um, about overall pitching, baseball development, um, injury protocols and health, everything that you can imagine with that. Um, so again, if you haven't already, like, comment and subscribe to our channel and we'll be seeing you guys soon.